Hello. We got a quick minute at noon. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. I am looking for some friends. I uh, got a few minutes here. Looking to see how's it going. Hello, John, Ryan, Blaine, Andrew, Brooke. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I think the ferocious Buddha's here from Shakedown. Let me know where you're calling in from. I see a friend. Hello, friend. Let's see here. The helicopters are coming. Let's go live. Questions. It's the middle of the day. Everybody ready for lunch? <laughs> Or in New York City, it's three o'clock. Uh oh. Oh. Hi, <laughs> Hi, friend. Hi, buddy. How are you? I'm good. Good. You have a great place to be quarantined. I know that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I know. Finally, I can isolate myself, and nobody would bother me knocking on my door, right? <laughs> Black Bill Brand up, the famous artist, and he was inspired me. Gave me one of the greatest gifts I've ever given, uh, been given. It's in my hallway at my office, but an inspirational piece of art. And you are just killing it, my friend. I'm sure you actually probably have some great things that you get to do right now that uh, focus wise, uh, that as an artist, I was thinking, man, if I was like a DJ or a musician or a painter, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world to, to have the whole world closed off. <laughs> Uh, I, I love that you're always so humble because it looks like you've got a pretty good thing going on yourself as well, David. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and also want to tell this quick because I know there's uh, a lot of uh, followers uh, uh, um, watching from uh, from Denmark. And I want to say that uh, me and David, we just met here on Instagram, like just, I think it was back in uh, like February. And w we were just having such a good connection and we choose to to meet up and uh, been hanging for a couple of times. And he's not only a friend, I also see David as a, as a, as a mentor and he's also collecting my art as well. Um, and, and he has like an am amazing uh, mission to uh, empower uh, 1 billion people uh, to be happy. Uh, and that, that's why I yeah just, just love this guy. He's just look at this smile. How can you not love that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we both share, you know, uh, the ability to channel inspiration and I can do it through, uh, channeling and teaching and, and you do it through your, your hands and art. And, but it's the same thing. I, we just transcode a higher vibration or frequency so that when either people listen to what I'm talking about or they see what you're talking about, it inspires them. They feel a different way. And I think these times make it a little bit easier uh, for those that can do that to communicate. It actually, I find it much easier to communicate right now with less interference uh, from my yeah. own ego and external circumstances and really been in the flow. Uh, there, there's a saying, right? I, I, lest, I, I rest in God, right? I rest in source energy. It's this time of rest that we can really see what our capabilities and our potential are. Yeah. What, David, what, what do you think has been like your, uh, because I know that you have been, uh, have like been going through a, a crisis, maybe not like what we experience now, but like there's also the financial financial crisis back in 2008. Uh, I, I was just starting my first company back then, and and I felt it. You know, it was it was super tough. But but I, you, you know, you just have so much experience. Like w what um, what did what was the thing like the most important thing that you experienced or learned through uh, like a, a crisis when the carpet just like ripped like under you. Like uh, what, was the, yeah. what was the most important thing you can, you can share with us here? The, le the lesson about, about pain. So I, I always thought pain was a punishment. So, you know, wh whether it was physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain, financial pain, I always felt like I was being punished. And <laughs> when I went through 2008, after living 93, 97, 2001, 2008, uh, growing up in the way that I did with a bunch of challenges, more and more pain, I started to realize by hitting rock bottom that pain is just a message. It's a signal. And that's why some people can handle, you know, a greater signal than other people. You take the Jesse Isler's and the Colin O'Brady's mm -hmm. and the um, Wim Hof, right? Like what he does. Well, those people have been able to understand that pain is not a punishment. P pain is a blessing because it's a lesson. It's a lesson, right? So oh, if you can identify 
the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, or financial pain as a lesson, then it excites you to learn and to seek the light, the love, the lesson in that type of pain. And when you can shift your paradigm to seeking love, light, and lessons, and even what other people receive to be the lowest vibration, the punishment of pain, then you can find light, love, and lessons in everything and everyone. And that's you know, true about artists and musicians and speakers and authors and executive coaches, all the things that I do. I even tell my employees, you know, because the ego has a need to be separated. We get scared when we're separated. And so people start looking towards the difficulties or start focusing in on what I call the race car driving the wall. And I'm like, you keep, you keep looking at that wall, you're gonna hit the wall. If you look for the superpower in everything and everyone, if you look for the light, the love and the lesson, guess what you're gonna find or at least get more of the light, love and the lesson. If you keep your eyes on the road ahead of you where you wanna go, not where you wanna crash, I promise you, you'll get there. And uh, that's kind of the biggest lesson that I've learned and carried with me for 13 years now is yeah. when I catch myself looking at the wall or trying to find the faults in other people, trying to find what I don't want in somebody, I'll find it. But if I look for the superpower, it's not always easy because people attack you, they do things to you, you have a need to be offended and right. But if you take your time and you seek the light, love and lessons and everything and everyone, you'll be fine no matter what yeah. the exterior pain may per be perceived. I'm so, um, it, it's so awesome. I, 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 I couldn't agree more. And, and it's also, it's, it's also at some times also feels it's so easy to say, you know, just shift your mindset and you can shift your situation as well. But, but, um, but it, it, it is as simple as that. It's difficult, but it is that it is that simple. Um, what I also, um, learned I want to, want to share with you as well is that, um, I experienced the financial crisis in 2008 as a 23-year-old young entrepreneur, never tried anything like it. Um, and people were, were cutting uh, the budget, their marketing budgets. And we had an advertising agency. So our bread and butter were the marketing budgets and all the companies were just like cutting off the budgets. Uh, however, we did find like there are 10% of the companies that still want to invest in their marketing. So uh, we were just like... Uh, me and my brother and a friend, he was 18 years old, my brother, uh, twin brother, 23 years old, out there and convincing uh, like CEOs to spend their marketing budget on us. And uh, we had a hit rate, maybe one out of 100, but we did have a, like a 1%. Um, and that was enough for us to to build this business in a crisis. And, and it's just like now, there are so many limitations, but uh, just, and I also compare this when I'm painting my art that sometimes I now I have limitations that are just there. I can't change those. But sometimes in my art, I put up limitations to force myself to look in different directions, to reinvent myself, and to uh, like create more uh, innovation. Um, actually, this uh, piece you see behind me here, I've spent like my whole quarantine on that piece, uh, and also some some other stuff. Um, but most of of my uh, isolation has been spending on that piece, and and it's something that you have never seen from my hands before. And I'm super excited uh, also to to show you and and the and the, yeah, the, 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 the get out of the way, man. Let me see it. Let's see I it. can't. Oh, I'm can. sorry. <laughs> I'm 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 revealing this next week. <laughs> oh, next week. All right. Well, I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. Are you gonna do um, it virtually so I can watch? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, yeah. Does it have a name? Don't worry. You 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 will you will not doubt when this. I'm I'm gonna do like quite a, a blast and, and tell a story about it because there's there's a deep story about it as well. Um, but I, I just experienced, and, and it's so awesome also to talk with, with, with you here because um, I, I actually love, you know, spending time, you know, by myself, but also just remember to check in with your loved ones, your friends and, and family like this. This is the, this is 2020. It looks exactly like this. And yeah. uh, what is, what excites me uh, a lot is that how much people they need art as well. Um, not only for uh, have something positive and, and motivational to look at, but also because art can like truly make a difference. At least I believe it can make like a huge difference when it comes uh, not only to uh, like spread positive vibes, but also like very specific on raising funds. 
Um, and I'm in a super fortunate situation uh, that, that people, they are, they are uh, hyped about art now. They have more uh, time at home looking at their bare walls. They want to invest in art. Um, so I'm just super thankful that, that, um, that, that my business is going great. And that's why I'm also doing what I can to help. Um, and I actually just uh, together with a bunch of other great artists and, um, and uh, this charitable uh, foundation called Heroes. We we are we are raising uh, uh, two million pounds. We're halfway there. Um, and um, in terms of this piece behind me, I'm also uh, working on a project with uh, with Red Cross uh, that will also um, uh, help uh, you know all the, the the people at the front line with like medical equipment and and just people like uh, having hard times in general. Um, and and you you you. Uh, have been like a great part of teaching me how amazing it feels to give like to be thankful and to give and it I'm almost getting the the chills here just expressing this because it means everything for me and it's it's a excuse my language but it's a fucking game changer it changes your life right away yeah and it does and I tell anyone that's the first step I don't know if you need professional help or not, but the first step I can tell you is go do a good deed for someone or something, even pick up trash or put back a grocery cart, whatever you can do, it's guaranteed to make you feel better. You know, the interesting thing about your art, you know I trace calligraphies because I believe that uh, energy is downloaded into things. So when you're you know, channeling that beautiful piece of art, that inspiration, there's energy that's carried in that picture that's behind you. When people put it up in their home or their office, it shifts the energy of the office. You actually can change an environment that's not apparent to the normal senses of people. And I always say the biggest problem that people have in reality is that their eyes, nose, ears, mouth, and touch don't really work effectively and their memories work even less effectively. If we could only raise our awareness to all the tremendous power that we have and all the power sources that are around us. So, you know, there's this duality that people don't realize that one, that you're always drawing energy. And I talk about a lot of times, you know, Mikko, you help me out because I talk about drawing energy from source. And then we talk about how I appreciate that. I'm grateful for the power that I have, but I add value to it is also appreciated. And then I give it to people, right? I give it through what I do, books and speaking and trainings yeah. and that. Yeah. But one of the things I didn't realize is it's not only there because everything's interconnected is that I also draw, draw power back, right? I'm drawing power on both sides. I've only been talking about everything comes through me for others, but I'm also drawing power as I sit here with you thinking, you know, I, I, I've been going at it productive, accessible since four in the morning, physically, mentally, emotionally. And I, my whole spirit raised right? Mid midday here. And now I've drawn enough energy from you that I'll power through till 8 p.m. <laughs> uh, you, you know, and when you do, you're not there and you, you talked about giving, but also receiving that I, I don't think for in my own person, I explain that well enough to people that, you know, I in some respects, I'm so gracious because, you know, today, you know, Ben Baller and Cakes by Courtney and Michael and I probably had 10, you know, Scott Boris yesterday teaching me things. I'm downloading, but I'm drawing energy that's coming through you, your art, yeah. your genius. Uh, and everyone has genius, by the way. There's no separation or inferiority or superior. Everyone has a genius. It's let's find our superpowers and put them in the way in the right place. Uh, your, your talents, right? It took a while to put them into the right place in order for them to elevate and accelerate and elevate for others. So, um, you know, during this time though, too, what what is inspiring you uh, most? I I think um, I think gratitude. It actually inspires me um, um, a lot. Um, and and right now, I just wake up and I'm thankful for the tiny, tiny, tiny things. You know, um, that that and I'm always having this mindset that I get to do this even though if it sucks i'm still I'm, i still get to do this you know and and um I, I think uh i think i get even more inspired when there is a a, a crisis or when there is like um a, a lot of things that you can control um i'm just 
trying uh, all that and i because i just want us um I just want to stay strong, you know, when, when, and the funny thing is, so when people got uh, the, the lockdown, the whole like uh, Netflix streaming network, they had to lower the quality because everybody was just streaming Netflix and everything. I, I was like, I, I don't want to watch more TV or anything. I want to watch less. I want to read more books. I want to learn more. I want to do all this. It's like, and I was already like performing on like pretty high level, but I just stepped out a notch more because I, I don't want to go with the flow. I just want to go against it. You know, okay, I want to, I want to work harder. I want to produce more. I want to learn even more, you know, and, and I, I had like a pretty uh, crazy routines, you know, but, but doing all that um, and, and most importantly, sticking to my routines, I went to the gym every day, but now I'm doing it in my garden. I'm like, I, I don't give, nobody is like taking my life away. I want to do everything that I can to, to do uh, what I usually do and do it even better. Um, so, uh, not being able to do a lot of things is forcing me to look in, in other directions that I would have never thought of before because it's almost more difficult for you when everything is possible. Like, how do you narrow it down? How do you choose what's relevant and not? Now you just put in a box that is not your usual box. So you have to figure that out. And I'm using it a way of uh, creating like uh, new pieces and uh, new thoughts and and um, but also to be honest with you um, people also uh, ask me about uh, everything from creative blocks and not being able to find inspiration and everything um, and uh, I just think that um, that is super important that that you just um, keep that you even though what if what comes out that you you hate it or you don't like it it's it's you just have to keep going because at some point you gotta you gotta hit it like uh, yeah. um on the nail um and, and i just think that's just uh deep inside me to uh just do what uh, like you know focus on what you can change just like the painting of mine that you have um where it's just focus on what you actually can change did it rain that it storm that it like you, you know or, or else you you will also lose your sanity you know how, how do you how do you not go crazy you know <laughs> yeah no exactly um, one of the yeah. things i wanted to ask you before we go is during these types of times when we're in accelerated change compressed uncertainty a pause a quiet time you know when you know i would say when a lemon gets squeezed there's a reason lemon juice comes out because that's what's inside of the lemon, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah. when we get squeezed with accelerated change, squeezed with compressed uncertainty, you know, we get to see what's inside of us, but we also get to see what's outside of us. Meaning that during these times in my life, you know, when I was sitting there in the low point, two years before I lost everything and my wife was gonna leave me, my dad's jacket came out, you know, other times in my life. Your what jacket? My, my dad gave me a jacket for my birthday when I was oh, yeah, 30, yeah, yeah. six year old yeah. actor, right? It was staring at me saying, you're just like me and it, and it saved me. And at other times, you know, people have appeared in my life out of nowhere, you know, old friends, new friends, somebody was there to give me a touch of a favor or support. Other times a book, you know, I, I've had books on myself for 20 years. All of a sudden it's the exact book that I wanted to read and that I needed to read. Has there been something that's come out to you, a person, a place, a thing, uh, as this t time has happened? Is there something that, a revelation that you're like, whoa, I should have been doing this a, a long time ago? Yeah, that piece right behind that? me. Um, I, 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 it, it has something to do with, with, uh, with uh, like would would my would my roots where I come from? You know, I'm from from Denmark, and and every time I uh, like when I started my adventure over here in LA, I've just experienced super much uh, support uh, from uh, Denmark, and especially these times, I have Denmark deep in deep in my heart, and and, and I just want to give all the, the love and everything I have to to my home country as well. Um, I've, I've so 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 yeah, that that was like a revelation. You can call that differently. Um, and um, yeah, it's, I, I just know that feeling. It's just so unique. It, it's so unique. And, and sometimes it's, it requires the most weird circumstances to make it appear, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah. It'd, be, it'd be boring if everything stayed the same. And, uh, <laughs> we can't have that. <laughs> exactly. And if everybody was the same. Well, my brother, I look forward to the 
uh, next week, the launch of the new piece behind you. I'm trying to look around you, but the, the camera doesn't <laughs> let me. <laughs> I, I'm just glad I have my own for my office and I go into my office by myself and I trace my calligraphy and I look at your painting in my office and feel the energy and the download from it. So uh, just keep channeling, keep the great work. That thing looks amazing behind you from what I can see. Thank, Thank you for you. doing everything that you do for others. And if you need anything, anytime, please reach out. Remember, I do free trainings on Friday. I know you've been there a couple of times. Please join me 11 a.m. tomorrow. It's on the ego. Could have influenced the last touches of that painting. Friday is tomorrow. I don't even know, like, you have the days. It is. Thank you. 11 a.m. tomorrow. And, um, David, it was so good to see you. Good to see your, your face and your, your, your smiling. And, and I, I, I have a lot in real life soon as well. Me too. I'll give you a real hug. Thank you, my friend. Take care. Yeah. The incredible Mecca brand. Okay, see you. Awesome, man. He's incredible. Uh, I just had to do that midday. He had reached out and uh, one of my favorite people. 11 a.m. tomorrow, uh, Pacific time. Maybe, Jakey, why don't you post that up there, 11 a.m. Pacific time. And you can go to that text message or email me at that email address below, everybody. We got a really big group of Collectus Consciousness and uh, appreciate every buddy here um looking to see you want to have a question real quick uh before we get this thing moving midday dave Meltzer, a surprise it never stops here thank you mikhail incredible artiste and person and motivator inspiration there we go jakey free trade tomorrow go ahead reach out to me we'll go ahead and pin that one for a second uh thank you thank you thank you can't wait jay uh all right it looks like we're uh, any questions real quick i can look and see what we got going on here look and see anybody have a question go ahead and ask it takes a little while the melter team thank you how do we get back to our routine tree routine so i always have two routines and i think this is really important for everyone number one routine is just a normal day it's the normal routine it starts at 4 a.m and is guided to make sure i wake up the next day at 4 a.m uh, utilizing exactly my priorities. The adaptable routine is when things aren't normal and they go by my value. So being able to, number one, spend a minimum of two, minimum of 30 minutes with my wife, a minimum of 30 with my son, a minimum of two minutes with my daughters and one with my son. So all these different things have two routines. Uh, and if the routines are too strenuous, then lower the bar. Two minutes a day is worth more than two hours on a Saturday. Write that down on your wall. Two minutes a day is worth more than two hours on a Saturday. So many people try to make that mistake. Uh, my Tuesday dose brother looks like he's there. Mikey Diamond, the incredible diamond in the rough. My boy, welcome. Uh, so please, uh, those two routines are crucial. Let's see here. Uh, what else uh, do we got going on? Did I freeze? No, we're good. All right, uh, let me see if I have another question here. No more questions. And uh, there he goes. He's on his way. There he is. Um, let me look and see where he went. I'll view him. Let's see where we're at here. Ines. All right, let's take one more guess since it's midday and I'll give up my lunch for everybody. I don't need it. Uh, I got enough to eat. Oh, Ines. What's up, my man? man? How you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, man. You know, just same. Which one is better, this one or that way? That one. That one yeah, is first better, way. Right? First way. <laughs> All right. That way. Perfect. That's a good way. I like it. Where are you at? I I am in Chicago. Actually, it's uh, today is beautiful, but it's it's been uh, rainy. You know. Nice. Are you gonna go outside? Uh, I might just go for a walk for like ten, fifteen minutes. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm I haven't decided yet, so we'll see. How about you? How you doing? Everything's good. Everything's great, man. I'm so excited to get to virtually meet you and there's certain people that it's so much fun right. right now because just haven't had the time to get down the list to everybody I want to meet. And looks right. like Mikhail says hi to you too. And that's everybody wants to say hi, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you got going on, man? Tell me. Oh, you know, just just uh you know, just trying to stay positive, man. Because like uh obviously our, our world experiences that it never something like it never experienced before, right? And uh, I think around this time, the most important thing, you know, just try to stay positive and bring positivity. So, like, for me, I, you know, I, I try to bring and 
enjoys being in, in people's life. So you know, so I'm like, you know what? I gotta do everything. I'm I'm in TikTok now. So like, <laughs> actually, it's crazy. Like what the world is going. You know, just I I'm not I'm not a dancer. It's not like I'm dancing or everything, but like I'm trying to do some you know the cool stuff so people can laugh, people can smile. You know. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I got a friend and he's on there and he's the last person in the world. I think he's driving his wife crazy because he's doing like nine TikTok videos a day. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, trust me. I know. Uh, I know. I've, I've embarrassed myself a few times on there. So uh, I'm, I'm doing my best to help to make people laugh as well. <laughs> that's anyway, awesome, man. you're talking about staying positive, And I think that's the most important thing, mm -hmm. as you know. Uh, that I'm trying to do, not only stay positive, but empower people to be happy. Right. Um, you know, what are some of the tools and tricks that you're using to be positive? You know, you mm -hmm. live such an extraordinary life and then it all yeah. closes down into a Chicago building. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you doing to keep that perspective where it should be? So like, if you look at our world, obviously, you know, there's a lot of people out there, you know, there's so much negativity and there's so many negative news out there, right? And, um, you know, it's like people, uh, it, obviously it's a heartbreaking people losing their life losing their loved ones losing their home and businesses but like i feel like i see this world in a big it's like a big team you know and i think that for me like the more, most important thing man try to like to you know bring this positivity in our team because it's like it's like it's not an individual sport it's like a team sport you know the you know important thing is how can you bring positivity in our team how can you make people smile when the team going when the team is going wrong or when we lose them by like 10 15 right how can you bring positive energy so we can be up again so i'm like you know what i gotta do everything to just you know bring people's spirit up so like, awesome. and when when you're playing you know and we both have been down in the game what are do you use verbal communication? Do you use your own play to perform to inspire other people? What are some of the key aspects in team play nice. to, to be that type of leader? I think all of it. I think just being a leader is not like you can be good. It's like you can go out there and score 30 points, right? But if your teammate is having a bad game, you're not a good leader. If your teammate is down, if your teammate is having a rough day, uh, not just on the court, off the court too. Good leader means bring people up with them. Not just the best player. I mean, I play with amazing players like Russell Westbrook, Damian Lillard, or Kemba Walker, Jason Tatum. Those people are what make them so special. Is they make themselves better and they make everybody else better around them. That's what makes him really special. So, like, you know what? If your if your family is okay or if your loved ones are not affected. Call your people, call your other people, call your neighbors, call your friends, call your, you know, your teammates, your classmates. So just, just make sure they're okay. They're having a good day. They're not having a rough day. So like, it's very important, man. Just being a leader is not easy. It's a big responsibility. Yeah. And you also have a responsibility to yourself, you know, as a professional athlete, being able to stay in shape. And I probably right. in your entire life, this is the most challenging time to stay at you know a professional level yeah. of performance because you know every other time in your life you, you had a place and space and help and coaching and yeah here you know it's not only the mental and emotional side there's just not as much equipment and space for you to do what you need exactly. to do it so like we had this you know you are going to be shocked but like we have this virtual workouts right the celtics actually calling us three times a week mondays wednesdays um, you know, Fridays at 11 p.m. Eastern time, sorry, 11, 11 p.m. Eastern time, and you cannot miss it. So, like, we had this virtual workout for, like, 45 minutes, and um, you, get, you, you get on that call, there's probably, like, five, six, uh, six players, strength coach watching us. We're just doing some push-ups. We're just doing some, you know, just some sit-ups. We're, we're doing some, you know, ab, ab work and stuff. I think, you know, it's very important because right now you cannot just go out there and hang out with your teammate, or you cannot, but you still want to you know, build that team chemistry, right? So, like, we, that's why we have this, you know, uh, workouts. And, you know, I see a player. I don't want to give his name, but I see a player. He is just so some people are lucky because they are they live in a big house, right? They have a court in their house, so they're lucky. But some people live in a small apartments. I see this player doing curls with a uh, suitcase full, full of clothes. He's just doing curls. I'm like, that is going to get us a championship. Yeah. I'm like, it's it's good, man, because it's good to see him just, they're not quitting. They just still want to go out there and just want to grind. So it's like, it's amazing. 
Yeah. You know, it's funny because even the weekend middle-aged warriors that may have played college ball, like myself, we've been spoiled, right? You you have these, you know, different techniques and nutritionists and, you know, you're, you're living a good life to stay in right. shape with these be beautiful people around you all the time. And all of a sudden, you're back to putting your old iPod mm -hmm. on. I got a clip iPod shuffle that I put on every day and I'm hitting just basic groundwork. I haven't ran this many miles on the street because they close all the beaches, you know. <laughs> exactly. I feel like I feel like Rocky going back to Russia, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I exactly know what you mean. Yeah, that's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Well, one of the other things is timing. Uh, you know, most people don't realize that the chemistry is one thing within a team, but the timing is essential, and that's what can really take a team that may not have as much talent as another team. And you see this, I think, a lot in college now, where. You get the fifth-year seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you get a mid, a mid-level, uh, you know, D1 school that can compete with, you know, five McDonald All-Americans because they have timing, right? They played together so long; they know yep. exactly. And you know, watching you play, there's a lot of that knowledge and timing. Um, how long do you think it's going to take you to get that type of chemistry back, where you just know where the guys are? Hmm. I think you know, for us. For us, just I think being a, being a, like a good friend, just making us a better teammate. You know, just like it's like learning from. Actually, I'm from Turkey, right? Uh, first time I come here, I had no idea what you know the culture is. The religion was different. The food was different. Everything was different. I was actually trying to get adjusted to America. I actually I was trying to learn English. I asked one of my friends, I'm like, where can I le learn the street language? You know, because I want to communicate with my teammates and coaches better. And he told me like, oh, there's a the, there's this show called Jersey Shore. Start watching that show. You're gonna learn it. Right? <laughs> I started watching that show. I'm like, this is wild, but I like it. You know, I, I I watched it. But uh, so what I'm trying to say is like, it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what your religion, your color, or your your ethnicity is. The most important in life is leave your differences on the table and trying to find what we have in common. And you know, so like with my teammates, man, we learn from each other. You know, we you know we have. You know, we have guys from France, Spain, or guys from, you know, all over the world, Turkey, Switzerland. But, like, we only talk one language, and it's basketball. And the better friends become, it's just going to make us, like, a better teammate. So, like, with, with my teammates, man, I just because of, I see them so much, they just become not just my teammates, but my brothers. So whenever I'm out there, man, it's like I'm going, to, I'm going out there and having fun with my brothers. But now all this is happening, it's tough. But I think... When this is all done, man, I just cannot wait to go out there with, with them again. So obviously, it's gonna take some time to just, you know, stay get get back in shape and stuff. But like, I miss him a lot. I bet. And then, you know, the other side. Of it, it's funny. I was in Turkey last. Oh, Everybody yeah. thought I was Turkish. They would come up to me. Speak you kind of look like you kind of look like Turkish. Yeah, you kind of look like Turkish. <laughs> I love the I love the food. Last question real quick is just one of the inadvertent things about uh, the the pause or this break or quarantine is that everything gets to recover. Our, our environment's recovering, yeah. our family's recovering. I think, you know, the world is uniting. Like you say, we're finding the similarities between us in sports. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as much as sports aren't here, the fact that everybody in the world misses it is a uniting yeah. factor. Right? We, we all exactly, are, are yes. experiencing this and we all have to you know, not take for granted our existence anymore as a whole. Exactly. Um, but as an individual too, you know, one of the things I've had a lot of athletes go on live with me, they didn't realize how much recovery they needed. You know, they, they, little aches and pains, they, they're, now that they're six, seven exactly. weeks in, they're like, whoa, you know, I actually, I've never felt better, like physically. Yes. Exactly. Because oh my God, yes. In the NBA, there's, I, like the NBA is brutal. I always say that, you know, my partner is Warren Moon. He's an ex-professional Hall of Fame football player, American. Uh -huh. And I always say, you know, it's one thing to play football, but that's 16 games or so, whatever. But and you're not playing every play. I said, right. but the guys that play the minutes, I go, uh -huh. I, I don't know how. When yeah. I see the, it, the brutality, the size, the speed, the contact, again, almost every single night, Yep, everything. I can't imagine how good you, your body feels right now. Oh, you have no idea, man. Like, the, I, during the season, I don't think there is one single game that I go in, I'm like, you know what? 
I'm pain free, you know. Yeah. But now I'm like I can sleep better. It's just like my body's rested. I I'm not gonna lie. I gained like seven to eight pounds. <laughs> but obviously, you guys sitting at home and just watching TV and eating. But like, but I feel I feel like we needed that. I mean, uh, we need that. Like, we need this break to just recover mentally and physically. Awesome. La last thing, last piece of advice for everyone about having that happy perspective that you do, that positive perspective. I feel like the last thing I will. I will want to say, you know what, I mean, till Elon Musk or someone find another planet to live, this world is what we have. You know, we need to work this, you know, uh, together. The key word is together. So, like, I think our world is experiencing is like never something like never experienced before. So, like, I think people out there need prayers the most. You know, it doesn't matter what you believe in, it doesn't matter, you know, uh, what you're praying on. So like there are so many healthcare workers out there, doctors and nurses, they need our prayers because they're putting their life on the line so our world can be healthier and better. So like, you know what? It's like, let's get through this together, you know, because this this pandemic taught, teaching us how much we need each other, you know? Uh, so I feel like, you know what? I mean, we are like a huge, big team. Whole world is like almost 8 billion. So like, that's let's get to it together and just beat this thing i agree no more attacking each other no more yes, judgment no. let's understand each other and pray for each other's exactly. happiness and health and i pray for yours my friend i can't wait to see you, you on the you. court I and i it, really thank appreciate you. coming on thank you so thank much you appreciate it yep. unbelievable man take care of yourself and you too thank you that's my boy i won't say Ennis is incredible. I really appreciate him coming on, and I'm sure you all enjoyed that. Let's answer a quick question, and then I'm going to go back to, to doing what it is. Here we go. Can you please follow me? I'm trying to get my name out there. Hey, Noah, your name's now out there. Noah, Noah, Class G. His name is out there. <laughs> what a good question. Anyway, everyone. Will be a big, big day tomorrow, 8 a.m. going live. But more importantly, everybody join me. Free training. Nothing. It's like the monster at the end of the book. If you see the Sesame Street with Grover, when you get to the end of my training, everyone's anticipating me trying to sell something, and it's not going to happen because I'm just doing it to make room for what you want and uh, giving my life away so I can get what I want. And that's peace, happiness, joy, understanding. People like Ennis just making my day. People like Mikhail making my day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time. David at dmeltzer.com. Text me at 949-298-2905. But most importantly, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.